or good day again students so we are now in our uh, second quarter so this is uh, module 15 which is about establishing validity and reliability so here so we're going now to have our uh, research instrument or our questionnaires so we're going to make our questionnaires and we will establish validity and reliability so these two concepts are very important in uh, making your questionnaires okay so to further discuss that so let's proceed uh, in this uh, module this is our competencies so the learner construct an instrument and establishes its validity and reliability okay let's proceed Okay, so let us say you are planning to buy a personal weighing scale to monitor your weight, a thermomet thermometer to measure your body temperature, or a tape measure to measure your waistline. These are few of the many measurements or tools in science and research that we use to measure something like weights, temperature, characteristic observations. But what happens if a tool or instrument does not correctly measure what is supposed to measure? Or a tool that gives you a different result each time you use it okay so this is very important in research so we have our research questions uh, in our chapter one so absolutely we need to answer those questions so to answer those questions we really need to have a tool to answer those questions so you can use questionnaires okay so in this highly technological age, research studies seek to create new knowledge and innovate. Establishing correct and consistent results binds great credibility and trustworthiness. That's why assessing the validity and reliability of an instrument to be used in any research study is essential in any research undertaking. Okay, so it's really important to have uh, these concepts, validity and reliability of your research instrument because it will add credibility and trustworthiness in your study it's like uh, having a car so if your car is uh, openly broke down or you frequently uh, have it repaired so absolutely if you are a buyer of a car so you will not buy that car because you know already the credibility of that car it, uh, it is very prone to repairs Okay, so that's similar to in research. Okay, so let's have here. So, okay, let's try this. So imagine yourself as a dart player and study the port, the, the four dart target ports below. The, the black marks represent the area where the dart pins landed. Okay, so we have here A, B, C, and D. So which you think is your ideal target? of your darts to land okay so have you chosen okay so so this is the guy question which among the four target boards do you plan achieving as a player why okay so absolutely you will choose letter c the bullseye because is your uh, purpose in research you really need to seek the answers in your research questions okay so that's why we really need to hit that target so to hit that target we really need to have the validity and reliability of our research instruments okay okay so let's now have, let's study this so establishing validity and reliability so validity and reliability are two important factors to consider when developing and testing any instrument. So a questionnaire using a study. Attention to these considerations helps us to ensure the quality of your measurement and of the data collected for your study. So in your study, your research project, I instructed you to uh, have a questionnaire. You find two sets of questionnaire in the previous study so you just adapted it so that so you will not have a hard time anymore in establishing validity and reliability in your questionnaires because it has already been done before okay so 
if you're going to make your questionnaire so you will follow this process okay so defining validity validity refers to the degree to which an instrument accurately measures what it intends to measure since the instrument of the study are used by the researcher in the methodology to obtain the data the validity of each one should be established beforehand now this is to ensure the credibility of the findings and the correctness of the following data analysis okay so when we talk about validity again is similar to uh repairing example you are going to repair your bicycle so example your bicycle has a flat tire so what instrument will you use to remove the tire so will you use a screwdriver a chainsaw or a range so what would be the suitable tool so absolutely you will use the ranges okay so that is the concept of validity so you use the tools needed or appropriate for that uh, example your uh, purpose in your research okay so use use it accordingly so example in your research questions you are uh, looking for example in your question number one the demographic profile you're looking for the age uh, the gender or the grade level education attainment so absolutely in your research questionnaire you must have those uh, questions there stated okay so if you're going to uh, determine the level of measurement sample the mean so absolutely you, you need to have the questions in your questionnaire that has uh, that can answer that uh, level okay in, in your questionnaire Okay, so these are the methods of establishing validity. So, educational testing and measurement. So, classroom application and practice. So, this is by Kubicin and Boric, 2007. So, enumerate at different types of validity. So, we have number one, pace validity or logical validity. It involves analysis of whether the instrument is using a valid scale. The procedure calls only for intuitive judgment. Just by looking at the instrument, the researcher decides if it has space validity it includes so I'll take note the pan size spacing so the paper and other necessary details that will not distract respondent from the questionnaire okay so when you talk about space validity so it's more it's more on the physical appearance of your search questionnaires so absolutely it must attract your respondent so that they will answer your questionnaire because so what if if you're given a paper which is which has, has a small pan so absolutely you will have a hard time reading it so you so they might have uh disinterested in your uh, study because of that uh factor okay so here are the uh format recommended so number one we have the 12 point pan size so this is the standard pan size so you must have that applied in your questionnaire so not smaller than this okay so you can use the following font times your roman verdana calibri or Arial, okay so to make it uh, pleasing to the eyes then the instrument must be double space uh, because so if your question is very cluttered so absolutely your respondent will have a hard time reading your questionnaire okay so that is about pace validity it's more on the appearance of your questionnaire okay so it's like a the packaging of a uh, example you have a a brand of soft drinks so to attract your customers so you will have uh, some advertisement on it okay so that's similar to the concept of pace validity okay number two content validity this kind of validity is determined by studying the questions to see whether they are able to elicit the necessary information an instrument with high content validity has to meet the objectives of the research this type of validity is not measured by a numerical index but instead relies on the logical judgment as to whether the test measures is intended to measure so content validity is measured by subjecting the instrument to a group of experts who have theoretical and practical knowledge of the subject so three to five experts would suffice so the 
expert assess the items of questionnaire and determine if the, if the items measure the variables being studied. Then the expert system will be considered in the revision of the research instrument. Okay, so it is found in your appendix A. So again, so content validity, so you will have your research in instrument checked by an expert. So sample, you will have a, your teacher is already having a doctorate degree, master's degree, so you can have them check it so, so that they can have a, a correction on it. Okay, so they will uh, have their evaluation on your questionnaire. So sample, uh, you construct this five set of questions, so they will going to give their comments on that. So it is going to revise, for example, the grammar and the tenses of the verb. So those are the things being looked into. So in validating questionnaires, so absolutely the, your validators need to look your research questions. So they will try to establish if they, it is congruent to your objective. Okay, so this is a sample of a uh, validator's form. Okay and validating your questionnaire. Okay, this is example of a validation sheet. So here we, uh, it's finally used, especially if you're studying a master's degree and doctor's degree. So we have this, so example, this is the validator's name, additional degree, position. So this is really needed because uh, to have more credibility on your study because it's evaluated by sample, your a, your teacher's a doctor, so it will add credit to your paper, okay, because the, an expert evaluated it, okay. So here are the common criteria. We have seven, clarity of test items, stability of items, subjectivity of items, adequateness of items, attainment of workforce, appropriateness of evaluation style, presentation, organization of topics, okay. So these are the comments here, so what suggestion you need to be changed, etc. Okay, so this form will, uh, will be given back to you by your validator and you will have this in your appendices in your study. Okay, so for, as a, for a questionnaire to be valid, so you must have a, a score not lower than 3 points. Okay, so you must have here. So, so if yours uh, the questionnaire is below 3 points, for example, your score is 2.98, so meaning it fails in the content validity. So you really need to revise the items in your questionnaire. Okay, so that is the purpose we have this uh, valid validation. Okay, so I hope it is clear to you. Okay, so let's now have, have now, so I hope it's clear the, about validity. Okay, let's have now the reliability. So it refers to the consistency of the results of an instrument in repeated trials. A reliable instrument can also be used to verify the credibility of the subject if the latter yield the same results in several tests. However, this is only true if the instrument used is valid. It's important to note that a valid instrument is always Reliable. A reliable instrument is not always valid. Okay, so take note of that. So this is most especially true when the subjects are human who are governed by judgment and prone to error. So this is according to Carmenes and Zeller. Okay, again, so reliability talks about the consistency of the results of your instruments. So example, if your respondent answer it in uh, five, five, four, three, two, one, or the, the average score is four point something. So if you uh, have it again tried to another uh, respondent, so they should have uh, results almost the same results, consistent. So that is reliability. Okay. So we have here uh, ways to have establish reliability in your research instrument. Okay, so we'll discuss it one by one later. So these are the methods. So number one, we have the internal consistency. 
the, te if the test in question is designed to measure in a single basic concept, it is reasonable to assume that the respondent who gets on the item right is likely to be right in another similar item. So in other words, items should be correlated with each other and the test ought to be internally consistent. So take note. So your items must have an internal consistency. So sample of it, so if your question is about social media addiction, so absolutely your questions there talks about social media addiction. Okay, so you must have that internal consistency. Okay, so to measure internal consistency, uh, consistency we have here the uh, Kronbach alpha relativity coefficient. So this is the most commonly used statistics for determining internal consistency. So our reliability coefficient of 0.70, so take note, 0.70 or higher is considered acceptable. Okay, so this is the formula for Kronbach alpha. So Kronbach alpha is equal to so k over k minus 1 times so this is the uh, legend so variance of the total column minus variance of each item divided by variance of the total column okay so we'll compute this here so let's compute it manually so I'll just remember the formula so example we have here the supposing these are your yeah uh, uh, questionnaires the answer to your questionnaire so you already tallied your result so this is example only yeah so sample we have only three items so this is just a theoretical for this is only for this demonstration purposes okay so in your actual questionnaire you can have 10 items etc so depending upon your study okay so supposing this is the data so you already tallied your questionnaire so item one Two, three. So, tally it in Excel. So, here are your respondents. So, we have how many respondents? So, we have seven. So, this is a score. So, in a one, in a Likert scale. So, I think you're familiar with Likert scale. One, two, three, four, five. So, here are the uh, scores of item one based on the following respondents. Okay. So, that is uh, step one. So, start by adding the scores of respondents in all items. So you add, so you got this in this portion. So 3 plus 3 plus 4 equals 10. So you add it until you get all the items. Okay, that's step 1. And step 2, compute the variance for each item, including the variance of the total item. You may use calculators. I think uh, you already discussed this in your uh, statistics and probability, how to compute the variance. Okay, so to have a review, so let's have this. Okay, example, how to compute the variance. Uh, this is example in item 1. So here are the scores, so 3, 3, 3, 5. So to compute the variance, so first, one, first step, you just compute the mean. Okay, so add all these items, 3 plus 3 plus 5 plus 2 plus 1 plus 3 plus 5. So equals 22, so divide by 7, because there are 7 respondents, the answer would be 3.14. So this is the mean for item number 1. Then, step 2, so subtract each item to the mean. So example here, our mean is 3.14, so you put in this column. So subtract 3 minus 3.14 is equal to negative 0.14. And so subtract and so on. So 5 minus 14, 1.86. Okay, so I hope it's clear to you. So this is just a review in your uh, statistics in grade 11. Okay, so subtract. And after that, compute the square of each item. So square this. So negative 0 0.14 times negative 0 0.14 is negative 0 0.096. So 1.86 squared, 3.4596 until you complete all the uh, items here so up to 7 out of Jane okay so here is the square of this difference here then after that you are now ready to solve the variance okay using the formula so summation of so x minus the mean squared divided by n minus 1 okay so 
substitute in the formula. So, this is the summation. So, 12.8572 divided by our n is 7 because we have 7 respondents. So, minus 1. So, 6. So, 12.8 divided by 6, that is 2.14. Okay? So, I hope it's clear to you how to get the variance. Okay? Okay, let's go back to our sample. Okay, so, so I hope it's clear how to get this 2.14, uh, 2.29, and 13.29. Okay, so these are the variants as we discussed earlier. Okay, then to get the total variance, it is it. So just add all these variants in the three items. Okay. Okay, so identify step 3, identify the following. So, K is 3 because we have 3 items. So, summation of S squared. So, it is 5.24. So, this is it by adding these 3 digits here. Then, summation of uh, S squared Y is 13.29. The variance of the total column okay so where's the total column this is the total column okay so i hope it's clear then substitute it in the formula okay so substitute so simply substitute the given so k is 3 and here substitute the variance of total column minus the total Variance of the three items. So, let's follow this illustration here. So, 13.29 minus 5.24, 8.05, and so on. Then, simplify. Then, the answer would be 0 0.908. Okay? So, that's how to, to have your compute the uh, reliability of your questionnaire. So, take note, as we discussed earlier. So, 0.70 is a good indicator that your instrument is valid. So this is 0 .90, uh, 0 0.908, so it's very high. So this means your instrument is reliable. Okay? So you can also do this in your Excel. So if you have Excel, you just simply type this. Okay? Type these numbers here. Okay? So I hope uh, you're familiar with Excel. Okay, so you can have that in Excel. You type it, then you will use the questionnaire. So example, show you this. Okay, so example, you're going to use a software to give us instantly the reliability of our instrument. So you will type the uh, items here so 3, 3, 3, 5 and so on okay so by the way we will use here in our in our uh, discussion here we will use the JAS software J, uh, JASP so you can download it it's a free uh, statistical tool so unlike SPSS so, so it has a payment so just is free so this is a just software i will just show you so you can download this in youtube uh, in google okay so you can have this okay so remember this so download that in google Okay, so let's now discuss how to compute the or use the software. So first, so you must type the data in the Excel file. After that, you're going to save it. So save as, example, I'm going to save it. So make sure you use this. So you just select here. So by default, Excel will be saved as workbook. So, so for you to use it uh, so, you, so that the just software can read your file you, you must use csv 
comma delimited okay so choose this and save so in my case i already save it okay so the purpose of it is so because the format in in just is it can read only csv files it cannot read xlx file okay in excel which is the default output so that's why you need to uh, save it as csv okay so after that so we'll now proceed to just okay this is just so first so we'll open so this is the menu in the just so as you can see i will discuss first the menu we have here descriptives t test ANOVA, mixed model regression, etc. Okay, so to make it clear, so I will just open the file. So I'll just uh, have the file. Look it where you save it. So just look for it. So okay, so I will just look it for. Okay, this is not my data. Okay, so as you can see the uh just software already read your data so these are the items okay so here so as you can see it's already in uh full color already because we have already data like okay so we have here descriptives i just uh, have it two purpose so descriptives we have here uh, statistics like, like, like this like main st etc okay you have t-test anova so there's a lot of tools here you can use in your study okay especially if you're going to have a correlation you can use here so you can we will have this we are going to have the test there's a difference now so these are the tools needed okay so we'll discuss this in our next discussion okay so now we concern only with reliability okay so here so so we'll go to here okay reliability so I will use single test reliability analysis. Okay. So I will go here. So I'll just select first this validity. So I will use the I will check the Cronbach Alpha. Okay. So here are items. So we just select them all, then put it in under the variables. We need it worth it to read here. Okay, so as you can see, we just read here. So this is our concern, 0.909. Okay, so this is our the value we need. Okay, the point estimate. So as you can see, is it is the same with our uh, result earlier. Okay, so the manual and the uh, automated computation using the JAS software. Okay, so 0.909. It means your uh research instrument is valid okay so as you can see in our module so it's the same result which is 0 0.909 okay so take note okay so I'm going to compare it in just software so it will have same results okay so this is the beauty of technology so you can instantly compute the reliability of your items okay so that's how we are going to establish our reliability in your uh, research instrument okay okay so let's have now here So let's have a recall. So number one step in establishing research validity and reliability. So number one, establish your research instrument validity using one or more valid methods. We have the page validity and content validity. So openly we use the content validity. Okay. Number two, establish your research instrument reliability using internal consistency method. So using the Cronbach Alpha. So I have discuss it how to compute it manually and how it to compute it using a software okay so if you don't have access to computer 
So you can compete manually using the formula. Okay. But if you have, you can access it. So you can uh, download just software. It's for free. Okay. Okay, number three, finally your instrument is ready for administration. So you can now have your instrument. You can conduct your survey. So if you already establish these two factors, validity and reliability. Okay, so let's have some samples here. Okay, so suppose here assess the, whether the following instrument passed the validity and reliability test. So consider the following results from the three expert validators. I hope it's clear. So let's zoom a little bit. Okay, so sample, these are the, I'll just zoom it, result of the validator. So we have a score here, 4, 3, 2, 2, 2. Okay, then another validator result, 4, 3, 2, 3, 4, 4. Then the, the third validator answered, or validated the questionnaire, 4, 4, 3, 4, 3. 3, 3, 7. Okay. Okay, we have here questions. So, compute the average or mean score of the three experts based on your computation. Will the instrument pass the validity process? So, justify your answer. So, take note. Average of 3 or above is needed to pass the validation. Okay, so take note of that. So, so determine if your our uh, instrument has passed the validation so you must add so in each of the sheet the scores being given by your validator so if the average is 3 in all of this so it means uh, your instrument passed the validation of the experts okay so again you will have this your appendices so we'll go to this process okay so test two consider the following results from seven respondents in a four item research instrument so compute the callback alpha based on computations will the instrument pass the reliability test so justify your answer so again so how to compute this so follow the steps i have discussed earlier okay uh, here so you compute manually so here, you already given the variance of each item. So just simply compute by using this formula. So our K here is, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So still 7. Okay, uh, K is stands for the items. Okay, it's not corrected. So it is 4. Okay. So 4. Our K is 4. So we have 4 items. Then, uh, so to get the uh sum of the total column so is 8.81 then the sum of the items so you must add so this is a mission okay so you so i think you can solve this on your own okay then so let's remember So, ability refers to the quality of instruments being functional within its specific purpose. It measures what it's supposed to measure. While ability refers to the consistency of the result in repeated trials. So, this method establishing validity of an instrument are phase validity and content validity. The method in establishing internal consistency are the method of establishing reliability is in internal consistency test so using the Cronbach Alpha. Then, take note, to pass the validation using the sample validation sheet, a mean score of 3 or above is needed. So, take note of that. Then, your Cronbach Alpha, to pass it in the test of reliability, it must have a 0.70 or higher. Okay, greater than 0.70. Okay? Okay, so for your uh, assignment, so you will have this so please prepare the research instrument you have constructed in the previous module then so have it validated so by the experts so you have this space validity and construct validity okay 
So, you may use the sample validity sheet in the Appendix A. Okay, number two, after establishing validity, can uh, you have constructed make extra changes advised by the validators. Then, establish the validity of the instrument using internal constraint method. Okay, show your solution. So, eight total samples only would do. So, I'll take note of this. Okay. So, again, so if you have questions and clarifications, so you can PM me in my Facebook account. Okay, so have a nice day and see you on our next module discussion again.